All right, TJ Lang, a couple days ago, a few days ago, spoke on what went wrong with Matthew Stafford and the Detroit Lions. Let's talk about it. Check out Detroit Lions Talk playlist for more videos like this. Best way to support the channel is share the video. By the way, make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button. And basically, he kind of went in on Stafford. I won't say that in a bad way, but he said he wasn't his leader. He didn't have that fire. He didn't really get on guys. You know, he was more of a guy that led by example. And for me, I mean, people just got this imaginary uh, vision that quarterbacks are leaders. Not every quarterback is going to be Tom and Rodgers or Peyton. I mean, to be honest, I mean, you know, I don't, I can't remember what quarterbacks or great quarterbacks that wasn't leaders. I wasn't in the locker room, but you know, you don't have to be a great leader to be a great quarterback or at least a formidable quarterback or a good quarterback. I think that was an accurate depiction. You know, you kind of see every time for time with guys, you know, he missed, I mean, drop a pass, he kind of, or he kind of yell and get fired. But really, Stafford just wasn't that guy. He wasn't an energy guy. He wasn't going to be a guy that's going to pick you up. I mean, talking about the greatest and the greatest leader by example in sports, probably Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan will punch you, lay into you, but that's not Stafford. Stafford is not going to take control of a team and, and get up there and give a fiery speech and you know, in, in kind of ways of those fire speeches and getting on guys and putting fear in God of guys is probably what elevated people to play better for, for Michael Jordan. You see Magic getting on guys and you got to do this better and that better. And, you know, he he just not that guy. You see Rodgers cussing guys out and don't drop being fiery, drop a ball, he on their ass. That wasn't Stafford. And then when you think about it, when they was at their peak with him and Sue and uh, Calvin, none of them guys was like that. They wasn't emotional leaders. They wasn't fierce leaders. All them dudes was leaders by example. Nice guys. The Lions really ain't had a leader since like Robert Porsche. A guy that's respected in the locker room and earned his respect, put some respect on his name. That's going to be, you know, that's going to get guys fired up. That's going to have them run through a wall for him. The Lions ain't found that guy yet. You know, Ray Lewis was that emotional, fiery leader for Baltimore. Brett Favre was that emotional leader for the Green Bay. Same thing for Rodgers. You know, even Barry was a guy that just led by example. You know, guys that's, that pick you up, that, 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 that you know, <laughs> that go through the routes with you, see what you're doing wrong, and, you know, hold you accountable without people wanting to put hands on you and saying you a prick or an asshole. That's what the Lions need. The Lions need an emotional leader. And then they really didn't have coaches that was emotional. With all that grinning and staring and snaring that Matt Patricia did, you know, he wasn't really a leader. He, You know, he really didn't bring the fire that you thought he would bring. He brought the arrogance, but he didn't really bring the fire. You know, so just looking at guys in Detroit history, Jim Caldwell wasn't that guy. Jim Schwartz wasn't that guy. Who was the last guy in Lions history that was fiery? Who was the last guy in Lions history that was going to light a fire under your ass? You know, who was the guy that's just going to have the respect of the whole team? We haven't had that guy. You know, and, and you know, if that's a, a, a fair criticism from TJ Lang, that is fair. And, and you, can't, you can't really teach that. Because he started doing it, it seemed like false bravado, it seemed like false leadership, false confidence. That ain't just him. You know, I'm not really mad about it. I mean, we didn't win. Ain't nothing going to change it. Nobody going to make go back in the time machine and teach Stafford how to be a leader. Nobody. But I just think, you know, Lane had a fair, fair criticism. He he been with Aaron Rodgers. He see what Rodgers like. Now, how many times you seen Stafford go up to the defense when they need to stop? Ride, ride him up. Let's get this stop so we get out of here. So we get this dub. Never. That just wasn't him. You know, who going to run through a wall for Stafford? You know, and a lot of people like him. You hear um, former receiver for the uh, Baltimore Ravens, was it Torrey Smith, say, you know, he, he endorsed Matthew Stafford. His peer, peer people love Matthew. His peers love Matthew. Bruce Aaron said he's he one of the few guys that he go out to watch early and warm up, throw the football. People seem like they had run through a wall for Matthew Stafford. But where's the wins? 
And a lot of by, a lot of people put not getting wins on Matthew on, on Detroit Lions and not Matthew Stafford. What about Blake Boyles? He wasn't a great uh, running back or you know quarterback. Excuse me. But he took the Jazz to the AFC Championship game and they should have won it. <laughs> he did. You know, I think Matthew Stafford had teams good enough to at least get a playoff win. I think at least win the division. He went 11 and 5 one year. What happened that year? You know, everybody blamed the Lions and not Stafford, but we'll see. If Matthew go on to win games and win the Super Bowl and be successful somehow, whatever you, you know, you know, you know, how you however you measure his success, if the Lions go on to be successful or not successful, same for Stafford. I mean, only time will tell. Stafford go over to the Rams and, you know, when it's time to win, he started turning the ball over and losing. And the Lions win it, then he was the problem. But it's funny how nobody ever says, you know, uh, Matthew might have been first. It's always the Lions, the Lions, the Lions, the Lions, the Lions, the Lions. You know. It ain't never Matthew fought. Even with the fans. Even when it's Matthew fought, the fans would be mad at Matthew. He threw a pick to lose game, whatever it was. They'd be mad at Matthew. You know, and then next week or at the end of the season, they forget about it. They do. They really do. They they forget about how he, he lost the coach game. He turned the ball over in the first and the second Minnesota game. How he threw the pick at Chicago. The Lions are perfectly fine. The Lions fan base is perfectly fine with Matthew Stafford's shortcomings. Oh, we gonna you done so much here. We're gonna miss you. What has he done but lose? <laughs> Didn't win a division. They have never won the NFC North Division. They won a Central. Didn't win a playoff game. Didn't win us a didn't get us a, a home playoff game. So what did he do? What are you thanking him for? You know? But C.J. Lane went on to say basically that Stafford is mentally and physically drained, and he should be because the last regime was just that bad. And, you know, it is what it is. And he he basically co-signed them moving on from Matthew Stafford. And I'm okay with that. I said, at the end of, I said last year they need, to, they need to draft a quarterback. Well, the end of the 2020 season, they need to draft a quarterback the year that he got injured. You know, that's that's what I said. They need to find a quarterback. Oh, no, Stafford can win with Stafford. You know, through 12 years, 11 years, 10 years, you're losing. Nobody ever thought it's Stafford fault. You know, losing Nate Bros and losing Calvin Johnson, losing Golden Tate, losing, you know, uh, who else you had? Um, and Naman Kasu. Nobody ever said, oh, man, Stafford. It was always, oh, we paying Calvin too much money or Calvin getting broken up. Or in Dominic, nobody ever questioned if Stafford was the issue in Detroit. All of a sudden, he physically and mentally drained and all that shit. Nobody trying to hear that. He didn't get the job done. Period. You know, and it was time for him to leave. And we gonna see if he if he's successful in, in L.A. Then, you know, it's a whole lot of lying for it. If he ain't successful in L.A. Then maybe he was the maybe he was the part on the car that you didn't think was a problem, and he was the problem. You know, maybe that's him. You know, maybe he the problem. Maybe he not the problem. But only time was tell. But I ain't trying to hear he was physically and mentally drained because of them. You paying all you paying you getting paid all that money to be physically and mentally drained. Go out there and win some football games. He didn't win a football game with the regime before that. Or the regime before that. So what was the what was the issue? Oh, Stafford had no offensive line. He had one of the best left tackles this year, one of the best centers, had one of the best rookie offensive linemen right there. They go three. Whole left side. You know, look at Russell Wilson. That ain't no offensive line in, in Seattle, but he still get them to the playoffs and win football games. It's just like it's cool to make excuses for Stafford and put all the blame on the Detroit Lions organization. That's what I don't like. Honestly, I don't like that, man. But, I mean, let me know what you guys think with T.J. Lang. Basically went on 97, won a ticket and said, you know, he from he from here, he from Royal Oak. But, hey, let me know what you guys think about in the comment section. Don't forget, we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you have a business question, inquiry, sponsorship, video request. All my social media links in the description. Fast way to reach me is Twitter, then Facebook, then Instagram. Also, we got a Facebook. Well, no, we don't have a Facebook. But, hey, want to make a donation, cash app, C.J. Good 313 Share the video. Appreciate the love support. 